Finally, guys, Formula One was back today with the first day of preseason testing in 2020. And in this video, guys, I'm going to review the action of day one. Who did what? Who was looking better than others? Who had, you know, certain reliability issues? And of course, looking at the times, the amount of laps completed, all of that stuff. We are now going to get into that right here, right now. And before we go into the individual teams, First off, let's look at the official results from day one of testing in 2020. So, finishing first and second, Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas. Sergio Perez is third, Max Verstappen fourth, Daniel Kvyat fifth, Carlos Sainz in sixth, Daniel Ricciardo P7, Esteban Ocon eighth, George Russell in ninth, and then Lance Stroll in tenth. Also, we definitely have to mention the amount of laps completed by the teams and drivers today so for example lewis hamilton on 94 laps valtteri bottas 79 perez 58 max verstappen 168 laps for the first day of testing that is absolutely incredible i i cannot believe that he's done that many laps for the first day of testing. Then Daniel Kvyat's done 115. Carlos Sainz, 161. And then 54 for Ricardo, 62 for Ocon, uh, 73 for Russell, and then 50 for Stroll. And then the rest of the drivers are Leclerc in P11, Latifi 12th, Kubica 13th, Magnussen 14th, and Antonio Giovinazzi in 15th place. And again, I'll read off... The amount of laps completed by the drivers. So Charles Leclerc did 131 laps. Latifi did 63. Kubica 59. Magnus 104. And Antonio Giovinazzi did 78. But first off, let's go to the world champions, Mercedes. And today obviously was a good day finishing one and two in the timesheets. But as we know, timesheets don't really matter in testing. But the reliability was absolutely there for this team the car in terms of how it looked on track it looked 90 percent of the time consistent and it did look just as good as it did last season so definitely this team has i think a very good base for 2020 after what was a great 2019 the only thing from today that was i guess slightly concerning was when watching on board in the slower corners this car did have a bit of uh, instability at the rear and was a bit oversteery. But other than that, again, this car on track really does look good. And on its longer runs, it also was very consistent in the lap times it was setting. So, yeah, Mercedes, again, very good, very strong. And it's not really, is it, a surprise that they are so, so strong at the moment, uh, even on the first day of testing next up we'll go to ferrari and of course ferrari in the timesheets ended up very low down but i don't think they were pushing anywhere near as hard as what they could do and i think really today they were concentrating on you know working out how their aerodynamics are you know affecting their car also of course which is very important they were focusing on getting reliability early on so 131 laps is I think good uh, for Ferrari and Charles Leclerc. It's a shame Sebastian Vettel couldn't drive today because he was ill, apparently. That's why he couldn't drive today, and that's why Charles Leclerc instead had to drive the Ferrari. But I think, yeah, way too early to tell if Ferrari, you know, are miles off the pace of Mercedes, for example. But today was really about reliability for everyone, and Ferrari look as though they have that um you know a lot so i think a good day for ferrari and we can't really read anything else into their day next up is red bull and well reliability was fantastic for red bull max verstappen completed over a race distance by lunchtime or by the lunch break in this day one of preseason testing that is absolutely incredible reliability and consistency from the honda powered red bull and i think it also shows you just how reliable the cars are nowadays compared to even you know four or five years ago where i don't think this would have been 
you know 168 laps over the entire first day I, I don't think four or five years ago that was really possible but today very very reliable that car was the only bad moments of the day was when max verstappen spun at the same corner uh but for different reasons twice uh, i think at turn 13 i think it was uh one time he touched the gravel and spun and then the other time he took a bit too much curb on entry and again spun his car but other than that, great day in terms of reliability. The car on track looked not amazing, but definitely good. And yeah, definitely a good day one for the Red Bull team. But now, let's head into the midfield. First off, McLaren. And McLaren also, in terms of reliability, very, very good day. Carlos Sainz, 161 laps in the McLaren. Very, very strong when it comes to reliability. And the car on track didn't always look smooth when they started or when Carlos Sainz, you know, started to push that car a bit harder than most uh, laps he was doing today. It didn't always look comfortable, looked a bit oversteery out of the slower corners, but... Again, day one and day two also is mainly about just making sure the car's reliable and working properly. And the McLaren is reliable and working properly. So great day for McLaren as well when it comes to reliability. And the car looks, I wouldn't say very good, but it looks, you know, good enough, I think, for the first day of testing. Next up is Renault. Renault have, you got to say, as you, you know, you look at this picture, they do have a very unique looking car with that front nose cone. And today was, you know, an interesting day. Uh, the car on track looked, I'd say, decent. I think at best you could say good on track. You know, the handling was looking all right, I think, most of the time. The only concern or or, you know, bad thing of the day was when, Renault seemingly took way too long to get Daniel Ricciardo out on track, you know, to change over from Esteban Ocon to Daniel Ricciardo and get Ricciardo out on circuit. I think that's the only real concern of the day is that they took a bit too long to get Ricciardo out on the circuit. But other than that, the reliability seemed to be not great, but good enough for the first day of testing for Renault. And the car aerodynamically on track looked absolutely fine. So again, good day for Renault. The next team was Alpha Tauri, who in the morning did not have that good of a start to the first day of testing, as they had some software issues that was causing slight reliability issues. Also, I think they had a cooling issue which uh, affected Daniel Kvyat's uh, running in the morning. And that's why Daniel was not able to, say, push harder earlier in the day. Uh, but I think Alpha Tauri were really running a bit more fuel on board compared to everyone else during the morning than they were in the afternoon. In the afternoon, they didn't really have any issues. Uh, they ran the car a bit lighter, you know, a bit more aggressive, and we got to see a bit more of the car. And the car on track... Once they start to push it a bit harder, it does look like a good car for sure. I don't know, of course, and I don't think anyone knows right now how good of a car it looks, but I think it's definitely something that Daniel Kvyat and Pierre Gasly, you know, will have fun driving, and it's something that they can absolutely work with. So the day didn't start off well, but at least it ended well for that team. But... From the midfield pack, I think the best day um, has to go to Racing Point, not only because reliability was uh, there for the team, but also the car on track really did look a lot better than it did 12 months ago. 12 months ago, this team really didn't look good at all. I mean, they didn't really look ready at all for the 2019 season, but for this season... The car looks a lot better on track. They're a lot more ready for this season than they won the 2019 season. And whether it's a Mercedes car or not, people have been saying that, you know, this is basically just a Mercedes car resprayed. Whether it is or not, this car is looking a lot better than it was 12 months ago. 
and I think definitely out of the midfield pack again we don't want to read too much into lap times but considering Sergio Perez was all you know already on the first day of testing quite a bit faster than he was in qualifying at the Spanish Grand Prix at the same track last year I think by no surprise, they are going to be the biggest improvers in terms of lap time compared to what they did 12 months ago, um, you know, in the midfield. So I think definitely the best day out of the midfield has to go to Racing Point. Car looking good, and hopefully that continues into day two. Now, Alfa Romeo had um, good reliability, I think. Uh, they didn't really push the car that hard at all. Robert Kubica did start pushing it a bit more towards the end of the morning, but Antonio Giovinazzi did a lot of race runs and was running a lot of fuel during the afternoon. So, can't really say that much about Alfa Romeo. I think definitely they were out of the midfield teams, probably sandbagging maybe not the most but they were one of the most um i guess sandbagged teams in terms of running a lot of fuel not you know running a high engine mode they're definitely not pushing as hard as other teams in the midfield such as racing point and mclaren so a lot more to come from alfa romeo the car on track looks i wouldn't say great but it looks all right so far from what I've seen. So yeah, a lot more to come, I think, for Alfa Romeo. And I think really the same goes for Haas F1. I think they also, during the first day of testing, were not pushing as hard as other midfield teams and were trying to more so get a balance over a race fuel uh, run rather than going for, you know, quicker lap times on lower fuel. And I think Haas... Again, that is a good thing for them to concentrate on that because, of course, uh, race pace and you know pace on race fuel last year was a massive problem. So hopefully they do improve on that. And uh, yeah, definitely today, I think they were also one of those midfield teams that was not quite pushing as hard as other midfield teams. So like Alfa Romeo, I think Haas, there is a lot more to come from them um, in terms of what they can show on track. Just like, again, Alpha Romeo. But for me, the best performing team of the day, if you compare what they did to last season, has to be the Williams team. Because this time last year, they were so incredibly slow. They couldn't put many laps on the board because they'd only just really turned up to testing. I mean, I know day one and day two of the first test last year, they didn't actually turn up. But... Obviously, they did turn up to six of the eight days of testing last year, and this year we do have six days of testing. So if you compare this to their first day of testing from last year, it's much, much better. And Russell and the Williams was much faster today in terms of lap time than he was in qualifying for the Spanish Grand Prix of 2019 at the same track. Again, I'm sure he was running not absolutely skinny but you know was running with a bit of fuel on board but i think that just shows you right there how much progress williams have made and maybe they will still be the slowest car on the grid and i still expect them to be that but in terms of pure lap time they are going to be the biggest improvers out of any team on the grid and it's good to see that williams are Maybe not a midfield team again, or looking maybe like they could be towards the back of the midfield, but you know they're making a lot of progress in terms of the pace of their car. Very good to see, and hopefully that does keep up. But guys, that is the review of the action of day one of 2020 preseason testing. Hopefully day two offers a further look at what the pecking order could be for the 2020 Formula 1 season.